Today on Apocalypse Auto, get ready because we're packing up all our junk to drive 1,100 miles down to the Mojave Desert to visit all our friends at Wasteland Weekend down in California. First things first, we had to install some headlights and some blinkers on the plow of the bus to make this thing technically street legal to drive all the way down to California. So after loading up SCAT, our S10 Blazer, along with all of our other junk, our poor car hauling motorhome was weighed down so much that after we filled up with some gas, we had to stop by Wayne's shop to cut the wheel wells and the wood deck a little bit bigger because the tires were rubbing. We were ready to roll. I feel it. And now I'm zoomed in as far as it'll let me zoom in. I can see your nose hairs, Wayne. Oh, man. <laughs> My soul never hurts it. It's <laughs> so everything was going awesome for about the first 50 miles. Then Wayne noticed that the 440 in the motorhome was making a weird misfire. And then it started to smoke like crazy, so we had to pull over to check it out and see what was going on. So after checking out the engine, not exactly sure what's going on thinking that we burnt some piston rings or valves or something like that but all we knew for sure is that we were not going to be able to take this motorhome all the way down to california so we had to turn around and head back to wayne's shop to reconsider our options <laughs> to Missoula the smoke was just getting worse and worse trying to kill us with carbon monoxide but then finally we made it to Wayne's shop and we had to talk about what our options were and what we decided to do was Wayne went and got the stinger out of the back of his truck cut it in half 
welded it to a plate of steel so that we could drill some holes through the bumper of the bus, which thankfully is pretty thick steel as well, and bolt it right on there so that we could attach a tow bar to the front of the S10 Blazer and tow it all the way down to California as if it were a trailer. So then we decided to siphon the $200 worth of gas out of the motorhome so we could bring it with us and then we had to drive the motorhome back over to Wayne's house and we finally came up with a name for the motorhome, Smokestack. After we got back from dropping off the motorhome, Wayne and Shane got scat hooked up to the back of the bus. Got all hooked up. So we decided to funnel in some of the gas that we had just stolen from the motorhome. I just, ah! Oh, look at that flow. you never seen flow so good. And then it was time to give this tow bar a test. Make sure that it was going to make the 1100 mile trip down to California. All right, we're leaving. Lock it. Let's get this shit show on the road. Finally. This is the point where nine hours earlier we had to turn around because the motorhome was breaking down. And so finally we're in uncharted territory. Everything's cruising good until we had to pull over and pull the drive line from underneath of the blazer because we were worried about it burning out the transfer case towing it behind the bus. So after pulling the drive line we are ready to roll. After making it all the way through Montana, down into Idaho, we're finally into Utah. outside of Salt Lake City I had been up for over 24 hours and so things on the bus started to get a little bit goofy and so after I got a couple hours of sleep I woke up at this gas station deep in the heart of Mormon country and I was feeling good enough I decided to climb up on top of the war child.
After cruising for a couple more hours, we finally made it down into Nevada. And after getting lost for a minute, we finally found our camping spot, and then it was time to relax. After getting a good night's rest on a nice flat surface somewhere other than inside the bus, we were ready to roll. And the next stop was Las Vegas. And on our way there, we stumbled across this racetrack in Vegas, which was a lot of fun because we don't have anything like this up in Montana. Oh, he drifted it! Oh, he drifted it! Finding out that Circus Circus has an RV park behind their hotel, we decided to roll over there and try to give that a try, see if we could trick them into thinking that this Doom bus was actually an RV. <laughs> and after that, we went and parked Scat so that we could drive over to this fancy pet hotel where we were going to drop off Shane's two dogs, Aries and Athena, because we couldn't take them down to Wasteland Weekend with us. And after we dropped them off, we were going to go cruise Las Vegas Boulevard. After cruising down Las Vegas Boulevard in the War Child bus, it was time for us to head out on foot and go have a little bit of fun. And what's the first thing you go do when you're in Vegas? Go get one of those giant ridiculous drinks. Bus next to it. There's a Ferrari. Let's just run into them with the bus. Oh, Let's wow. drive through all of it. Ooh, it. How much? 200 bucks for 90 miles. Oh damn! 90 miles, bucks for dude. Two and a half hours. Give me 10, dude. There would be Look at no the rubber left on the tires no. by the time I was done. 24 hours for 600. Can you imagine? Uh, you could make this car. Get the car back after 24 car hours. Yeah. No, I would do All right, we lost. Where'd the rest of everybody go?
here. Video tip me drinking it. Do you really want to see what it looks like when the guys from Zombie Tools and the guys from Apocalypse Auto go out in Vegas together? And, and they answered no! He said no! It's no! But if you really do, click the annotation on screen now and we'll take you over to our MT Souls Tribe page and you can watch the full video of us acting like fools in Vegas. After our ridiculous night in Vegas and the brutal hangovers that followed, we had to get back on the road so that we could make it down to Wasteland Weekend for early entry and get our camp set up. On our way through the desert, we had to stop to fill the war child up with some gas and fill our coolers up with food and beer, and we managed to run into a couple fellow wastelanders and check out their sweet ride, and then it was only a couple more miles until we were at Wasteland. Oh, that was the plow. Hitting the ground. After driving down some old dirt roads, we managed to get lost one last time, and as the sun was going down, we finally pulled up to Wasteland. After our 1100 mile road trip in the War Child bus, towing Scat the S10 Blazer behind, we finally made it. And the people who run Wasteland were nice enough to give us the spot right by the gate so everybody pulling in the Wasteland could check out our bus. The next morning we arose to see the huge line of cars of people coming into Wasteland. and. That was just the beginning. As we were setting up our camp in the morning, we started to see some of the incredible vehicles driving around, and then it was time to get dressed and go to initiation.
after checking out some of the cars and all the people in their crazy costumes, all we could think about was getting scat out in the dirt and going and having a little bit of fun. After rolling down the long line of cars to say hello, it was time to take this S10 Blazer somewhere we've never gone before, out into the desert. But first, we had to remember to put the license plate back under the rear of the Blazer because there were a few police officers spotted patrolling around the area, keeping things safe. There's Shane's sexy ass. Look at that demon go. There's essentially where we're living. It's a little teeny tiny town in the middle of nowhere. We call it Wasteland Weekend. Here's the buggy. This is going the other direction. As you can see, there is nothing but nothing out here. It is a very empty playa. Actual California City is beyond that little bump out there. Way up across the horizon. You can almost see the curvature of the earth at this little resort that we found in the middle of nowhere. Pretty cool. And diesel tribe. Too much fun. After having a little bit of fun romping through the desert, we head back to our camp because we heard that the apocalyptic car cruise was about to begin. But first, two thumbs under, one thumb leaves. One of our friends, Wilson, had a bounty out on his head. Bust his knuckles and his guards. And this is how we resolve that in the MT Souls tribe. We brought this thing down, the Thunderdome. So, when you try to come collect a bounty at Empty Souls, this is how we handle it. After Wilson got to keep his thumb, we had a friend stop by and make us some chainsaw margaritas. I love the drink, it makes a good touch better. I keep my breakfast boozing. I love my Lord family. After the best margarita I had ever had in my life, it was time to wander around and check out some of the apocalyptic vehicles. Oh, this new crazy mother!
towing this generator that we pulled out of the car hauling and motorhome all the way down to California just in case we needed to make some power in the middle of nowhere. The only thing we managed to use it for was to cut this helmet up so that Wayne could wear it without messing up his spikes. After finishing up working on Wayne's costume, the apocalyptic car show was about to begin. His God and show business too. Wasteland and the War Child bus was one of our favorite things to do, and we were having no problems until we ran across a big dip in one of the roads. Oh God, we're gonna hit! Oh, Devastating! But then Wayne just throttled down and dug on through. We did that on purpose. The festivities don't stop when the sun goes down. In fact, that's when they begin. No, it's over, but the ringing is still in my ears. I'll come along, but let's get one thing there. I feel like we should be hunting for kangaroos or some crazy. So why will be there? Let's go for a ride. To try to describe what happens at Wasteland in words is futile. There's so much going on, I can't even explain. It's so much fun that you have to be there to experience it. There's so many different camps with so many different themes. They all have their own fun things you can do. There's music, drinking, they have the Thunderdome, you can go and settle your disputes. There's gambling, but instead of using money, they just use bottle caps. And the list goes on and on. What?
a crazy night of fun and debauchery, we were ready to take Scat out for one more romp in the desert before we had to pack up from this apocalyptic wasteland and head on home. abusing this poor S10 blazer when we realized that it was starting to overheat pretty bad and then we noticed that the water pump wasn't working so it was time to wrap things up and get poor Scat back to his war child go bus. back to where we and then just go spin a couple of shitties over there in the big field. or where yeah wherever After another fun night in the wastes, sadly, it was time to pack up and head on home. Yeah, I gotta make a turn around. Uh -huh. yeah. We'll be back. civilization we got one more reminder of our wasteland home when we saw our friends and big daddy warbus drive by and then we we're off to Vegas when we got to Vegas we had to go to the doggy hotel pick up Aries and Athena and then the plan was to make it back to the Red Rocks and camp there for the night.
but if you manage to get the war child up to 75 miles an hour there's this little red light that pops up on the dash that says over speed just to remind you that you're in a school bus the next time we stopped to fill up with some gas, Wayne was just washing the windshield. It was completely normal until he noticed that I was filming him. And then things got a little bit uncomfortable. desert and it was 95 degrees and as we started heading north there was snow in the mountains <laughs> the plan was to hightail it all the way through the night until we were home but then we had a little hiccup all right, we just pulled into Idaho Falls, Idaho to get some gas, and we had a little accident. Oh, it's gonna break. There it goes. Oh, that's good. So, since the tow bar broke at about 2 in the morning, yeah. our only option really was to sleep in the gas station parking lot and then just go to Harbor Freight in the morning and pick up another tow bar. Burr. Burr. That was exciting. Let's go to Harbor Freight and buy a full bar. I need to pee. So having to leave Scat behind, Shane stayed with the two dogs to watch guard, and then we were off to go pick up a new tow bar. tow bar successfully attached to scat we just had to make a quick run around the parking lot to make sure it was gonna hold on and then we were on our way home after making it the last couple hundred miles from Idaho to Montana we were having absolutely no problem until we were about one mile from Wayne's house and then this happened
who's driving this. Alright. So. Alright, so hey, a couple things that we stopped here for is The police officers dug what we had going on here and they let us off with a warning for not having working trailer lights. And we figured that would be the last time we saw them. But three minutes later, after we finally got to our destination, they're back. Ran, ran it over again. Are you serious? Yeah, I left it sitting right there. Except up there. Did it survive? Yeah. Uh, it's not in the best of shape, but it's still fucking worse. Yeah. window and got ran over. You guys are like, you drive. Now that we were back home, I laid eyes on our car haul and motorhome smokestack for the first time, and now we got to start thinking about what we're gonna do with this big old beast. But I guess that will be left for a future episode of Apocalypse Auto. And as always. Thank you so much for watching.